I want to start this month's update with a few quick words about the European Space Agency's ExoMars mission. As I'm sure you've heard, on October 19th, the Schiaparelli demonstration lander experienced an anomaly during its descent towards Meridiani Planum on Mars. Recent images from NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter have since confirmed this, showing a 2.4 metre wide crater, estimated at 50 centimetres deep, that is consistent with a 300 kilogram object impacting at 300 kilometers per hour. The telemetry returned indicates that the parachute and rear heat shield, which have both been imaged about 900 meters south of the crash site, appear to have ejected earlier than anticipated, and the descent thrusters unfortunately only fired for a few of the 30 planned seconds. Though the exact cause of this is still being investigated, and further imaging is planned for next week, the Director General of the European Space Agency, Jan Werner, has emphasised that 80% of the planned descent data was successfully returned. Furthermore, the other part of the mission, the Trace Gas Orbiter, has successfully entered Martian orbit and will begin making its first science observations on November 20th. But the, I mean, the real reason that this mission was particularly close to my heart is that one of the instruments on board Schiaparelli, a wind sensor, was actually designed by Dr. Colin Wilson, who I worked with in Oxford a few years back on Venus Express data analysis. And even more frustrating is that this exact same instrument actually flew on the UK's Beagle 2 mission, which though it successfully landed in 2003, unfortunately did not manage to fully deploy. But hey, no one said that Mars was going to be easy. And I'm sure this won't be the last setback. But this won't stop us from rising to the challenge. If anything, it will only make us more determined. Right, so on to the main topic of this month's update. Because perhaps the single question that I receive most frequently is about the financial status of Mars One and how they intend to fund their multi-billion dollar crewed missions. So today, I'm finally going to present a detailed update on Mars One's current funding status, including an explanation of an important financial deal that they signed last week. To date, Mars One has spent around $1 million on developing its mission. This money has gone towards conceptual design studies by Lockheed Martin and the Paragon Space Development Corporation, conducting the first two rounds of their astronaut selection process, as well as public outreach and general operational costs. These developments were financed through a combination of private investments, donations, sponsorships, partnerships, astronaut application fees, speaking engagements, and finally merchandise sales. In systems engineering terms, Mars One is currently in the phase A stage of their development. So far, the top level requirements have all been identified, discussed with established aerospace providers, and a baseline mission concept has been defined with a rough budget drawn up. The initial cost estimate breakdown for Mars One's mission is as follows. $450 million for the first demonstration lander. $425 million for the communication satellite. $900 million for the first rover mission. $2.3 billion for the remaining outpost hardware and supplies. $1.25 billion for the first crewed mission. $582 million for operations, including astronaut selection and training and finally $93 million for ground stations and other costs, which comes to a total of $6 billion. This would then be supplemented by an additional $1.85 billion per year for follow-up crewed missions. Upon completing all of the mission concept studies for every key component, each of which takes between 500 to 2,500 worker hours, the baseline design will then be updated and cost estimates refined accordingly. The next phase of development, Phase B, is a round of detailed design studies of all elements needed to successfully bring humans to Mars and support them operationally on the surface. 
This will then be followed by phases C and D, which is when the actual construction, integration and testing of all mission elements are completed and ultimately launch towards Mars. Now, as you might have gathered, the greatest challenge facing Mars One in moving all of these plans forward is securing the requisite funding to realise them. To this end, Mars One made a notable step last week when they jointly announced with Infin Innovative Finance that part of the company will be listing on the Frankfurt Stock Exchange. This is being accomplished via a reverse takeover, which is essentially when a publicly traded company, in this case Infin, buys a private company before changing its name to that of the private company, and then the private company formally takes control of the public company. In short, Infin will acquire 100% of the shares in the for-profit part of Mars One, called Mars One Ventures, in a deal that values Mars One at 107 million euros. This purchase is paid for by the issuing of new Infin shares, such that Mars One Ventures will own 97.5% of Infin, take control of the company, and then rename Infin to Mars One Ventures. At the end of this process, which is expected to be completed on December 2nd, Mars One Ventures will become the first publicly traded Mars Exploration Company. Through the Frankfurt Stock Exchange, they will have direct access to the global capital market, which will enable investment banks, funds, stockbrokers and retail investors to purchase shares in the company. Now note that I said this applies to the for-profit part of Mars One, which is responsible for the monetization of the mission, as the company also consists of a non-profit Mars One foundation. The non-profit is the part that oversees the astronaut selection and training, owns all of the mission hardware, and is responsible for organising the mission itself. This company structure has been designed to ensure a separation of interests, such that investors who are interested solely in financial return cannot dictate how the mission itself is carried out. The structure and leadership of the foundation will remain completely unchanged by this deal, with the CEO of Mars One, Bas Lansdorp, also becoming the chairman of the board of directors of Mars One Ventures. Whilst Bas focuses on organising the mission itself, a CEO with over 15 years international business experience and extensive media contacts is being actively sought out to successfully grow Mars One Ventures into a multi-billion dollar company over the next 10 years. Following the listing in December, Mars One Ventures will transfer 6 million euros to the Mars One Foundation, which will be spent on awarding new aerospace contracts, moving ahead with rounds 3 and 4 of the astronaut selection process, as well as expanding the permanent staff at Mars One with personnel that possess extensive experience from previous missions that have already gone to Mars. In the future, Mars One Ventures will also transfer 5% of all gross revenue to the foundation. This 5% transfer ensures that the two entities comprising Mars One are coupled together in a positive feedback cycle. Because when Mars One Ventures generates more revenue, the funding that will then flow back into the foundation enables additional mission progress, such as detailed designs, hardware development, and even eventually launches and landings on the surface of Mars. The documentation of such progress, though, can then be shared with the world via mediums such as TV documentaries and online content. And since Mars One Ventures own the media rights associated with the mission. This progress drives an increase in the value of the company, its net revenue, which can then flow back into the foundation and then hence repeat the cycle. It's worth stressing though, that this 5% license fee is not the only way the foundation plans to acquire the estimated $6 billion that would ultimately be needed in the lead up to the first crewed mission. Alongside this listing, Mars One is also in the process of a private placement round, 
which has already welcomed new investors on board, with a few interested in making more substantial investments. Eventually, Mars One expects that public donations to the foundation will eventually far eclipse the 5% revenue transfer, a conclusion based on historical data which indicates how the number of donors and the average amount per donation have correlated with major progress announcements. Examples of such announcements include the announcement of the first contract with Lockheed Martin back in 2013, the publication of the Environmental Control and Life Support System Assessment by Paragon, and with the conclusion of each round in the astronaut selection process. In any case, the point is that the investments raised through this listing will bring to an end the relatively quiet period we've been experiencing over the past year, and I'm really looking forward to continuing to share new mission updates with you in the months ahead. In the meantime, I highly recommend that you all check out the National Geographic Channel's new series Mars, which premieres tomorrow. This is a six-part miniseries that is a fusion of scripted drama following a future crewed mission to Mars, along with expert interviews and documentary coverage, particularly focused on SpaceX. In my mind, what's really unique about the series is its focus on an international, private effort to carry out a human mission, rather than the more traditional documentary route of following one of NASA's design reference architectures. Indeed, the hardware featured in this series is clearly inspired by SpaceX's interplanetary transport system, and the producers truly seem to have gone the extra mile to ensure that scientific integrity is not compromised in the drama portions. If you'd like to know more about the series, I'll post some links down in the description for you as always. By all means, please drop me your thoughts on the series down below whilst it's airing, as I do read all your comments, and I'll certainly jump in when I manage to find the time. Because you see, uh, things are a little hectic for me at the moment, as my research has taken a really exciting turn, and I'm pretty much devoting every waking hour to getting the results ready for the peer review process at the moment. Um, this does unfortunately mean that I probably won't be able to get another video out, this month at least, but um, if all goes well, then what I'll do is I'll put together a special video on what I've found once my paper has been accepted for publication, which will probably be around January or February time. Because that way, at the very least, you'll be some of the very first to know one of the latest results in exoplanet science. Thanks for watching. If you're new to this channel, I produce monthly updates examining our progress towards establishing the first human settlement on Mars, along with exploratory videos on planetary science and human spaceflight. This month's feature video is the trailer for the National Geographic's new series Mars, which I thoroughly recommend. I'm also still producing an in-depth video on Proxima B, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it, and please send in all comments and questions you have down below.